Hello and welcome to Wisdom and Productivity, the podcast of Dr. Efraim Martinez. I am a principal in search of wisdom and I have found productivity to be a great tool for success. Today's episode is titled Taking Massive Determined Action or the Purpose of Wisdom and Productivity. Uh, it is so nice to have you here in the show. Uh, today is Saturday, October 22nd. Uh, I was telling my children that I absolutely love Saturdays because Saturday is the only day in the week where no matter what you do, how much fiesta you do, uh, there is always an opportunity to sleep over the next day and take a, take it relax. So I truly, truly enjoy weekends. And talking about weekends, uh, last week I had a fantastic opportunity to join Teach Better 22 uh, as a guest, as a presenter, and as a podcaster. So what an awesome opportunity. I met so many individuals uh, in person. They are real. They are, uh, I was able to hug them and, and celebrate them in person. Um, I was thinking of making some sort of uh, a show reflecting on what occurred during the event, but perhaps I thought it would be redundant for me to, to go over. However, uh, I did follow up with, uh, and many of the individuals that I met who I am highly interested in interviewing for the show Wisdom and Productivity because they are luminaries. And I believe that the world would be better if, they're, if everybody's able to learn from them. So soon in this uh, season, you're going to see several interviews that I'm so looking forward so I can learn about their wisdom and productivity and I can learn about who they are, and we can both be grateful for the things that we appreciate. Um, but anyways, uh, today's uh, title of the show uh, comes based on uh, two quotes that I'm going to read to you uh, in a few seconds. But first, let's celebrate the amazing Teach Better community. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get back to the episode. So let's begin with uh, the first quote that inspires the title of today's episode. The quote is by Tony Robbins, and it says, The path to success is to take massive, determined action. So um, I want to talk about why of wisdom and productivity since uh, I started in Teach Better way, uh, like a year after I already started individually. So perhaps I never got to introduce to this community what my show is about. So... Um, I am um, going to connect the why of the show with this quote uh, in this way. When I was uh, pursuing my doctoral degree, I found that I loved to research on how successful people are able to be successful and stay up there, right? I am highly interested in knowing what happens behind the scenes of this individual. So uh, I created this show to do exactly that. So uh, the quote, the path to success is to take massive determined action. I, had a de I was determined to improve myself and what a better way to do my own research, to 
enable traffic university when I'm driving to work and from work. Um, and I also uh, want to have the opportunity to interview people that are kicking some serious butt out there and they are making it with finesse. They are making it in a way that is making a difference. And just like an LP of music, right? Uh, if you remember, there was always a side A and a side B. So in many ways, what we see uh, in the Twitter feed, what we see in websites, in presentations and stuff like that, we see the side A, right? We see the persona, the artist, the educator, uh, the person who's trying to change the world. But my interest is exactly what happens in the side B. So if we think about music, uh, perhaps Sony or the company that produces music didn't think certain songs were of uh, marketable quality enough, meaning maybe they were too long or they were too complex. So I am interested in having people in the show that can talk about the side B. And this is where the second quote connects. The second quote is, the mind is like an iceberg. It floats with one-seventh of its bulk above water. That is a quote by Sigmund Freud. So I am highly interested in not only seeing the success, but how this person creates that success and is able to maintain it. So the wisdom and the productivity. So in my show, I have a very specific set of questions that I have... Um, Uh, fondly created uh, and call them uh, the luminary questions, the questions that get to open that onion and peel it, right? So the people can get to respond to a specific set of questions and I can know who they learn from. I can know uh, what inspired them. I can know what are they reading, um, What is the book they will give to someone they love, both fiction and nonfiction? Because it's important to dwell in, into those two categories. Um, I get to ask them who is or who are their influences. And uh, usually people talk about uh, family or friends or mentors or, or people who who have gone above and beyond and made them who they are. Um, and then uh, I get to ask them about how do they get organized in their lives? What is their, um, uh, what are their habits of success? How do they get organized? How they do email and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that, uh, Um, by doing this is a massive determined action of finding out how other people do it so I can adapt and borrow certain aspects and apply it to my own life and way of doing things. So uh, for me, this is important because... Uh, Ever since that encounter that I had with fire, I had determined that in my life, it is absolutely essential that I can focus in the improvement of the way I do things, right? So um, I'm going to begin with um, the same questions I ask people during the show. I'm going to respond Uh, to these questions in a way that basically I am doing a sample of what the interview will look like, right? And the first question is, who are you? Okay, so if I had to interview myself in the show, I will tell you that first of all, I am a father, a husband, a school principal, podcaster, And a kid that just wants to have a lot of fun. So let me kind of uh, 
remove that, right? So a, a fundamental uh, position in my life is to be a father, have two children, one goes to high school, one is in middle school. Um, there was a time where I used to share their pictures online and all that kind of stuff. But at some point I decided that their privacy uh, was so important. And in honest truth, I never asked them if I could share their their lives and their intricacies and all that kind of stuff. And um, I work uh, in an environment where sometimes people get angry at you and they want to harm you. And uh, the truth is that I wanted to avoid my children having to go with that. I wanted to give them their privacy, but I am highly engaged in their lives. And everybody that knows me personally knows that every opportunity that I have, I am there for them. Second, uh, I am a father, uh, I'm sorry, a husband, a dedicated husband. Uh, my wife is an art teacher and uh, she's also my best friend. And um, it is quite wonderful to spend your life with someone who, who makes you a better person and that is totally dedicated to the love of you and your family. So that is uh, quite a luxury. I also live with grandma. This is the mother of my of my wife, uh, grandma for my children. And we have a, a dog, uh, used to be a service animal. Um, and recently, well, a while ago, retired and now lives a life of luxury. And uh, the voice at the end of the show is the voice that we imagine uh, Chulu will have. And she always concludes the show to because humor is something important for me. Uh, I introduce her at the end of the show. Uh, I am a school principal. Uh, this is something that I wanted to do for a very long time. And uh, my main task is to get to coach and mentor students and uh, associate principals and, and, and teachers and secretaries and uh, paraprofessionals and anyone that is in the middle, including students, of course, um, to coach on how to make better decisions and how to anticipate problems on how to create blueprints of success to ensure that an idea, a concept ends up in a, in a product um, that is conducive to improve things because I deeply believe that when you do good things, good things happen. So um, I am a podcaster. This is uh, what I found to be my art. I thought I wanted to be a writer. I thought uh, I was going to do other artistic stuff. And um, I discovered that this, not new, but new for me, this new venue of podcasting is the tool that was designed for someone like me who likes to talk and, and, and reflect on things and talk to interesting people because life is too short to be bored. So it's always good to be learning from others. Uh, I have a doctorate uh, in education. I tell children that um, they go and see the dentist for the teeth or they take their animals to the vet. So I'm the person that is the geek in education, right? In terms of uh, as a practitioner, I try to find research not only from education, but from the area of psychology and neuroscience and philosophy uh, issues of productivity and wisdom, all of that I use as an amalgam of resources so I can have a whole arsenal of tools to support the people that I work for, to support my children, to support my wife. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, basically me. I'm sure that uh, I forgot, uh, let me see, in addition to all the professional stuff, right, like... Uh, I enjoy um, 
I play FIFA uh, in, as a video game. I play one video game and I play, I would say, maybe once or twice a week. Uh, I love to read and audiobooks, uh, music. Uh, I love to, to do mindful activities. And lately I'm very hooked up in uh, micro breathing practices. So yeah, that's who I am. So the next question is, um, who do you learn from? And uh, I sincerely and frankly learn from everyone. There's always something that we can learn from someone. Uh, it could be someone I see on the street, someone I see online, in the train, in the car, in the airplane. Uh, there's always someone you can learn from. Uh, but in particular, I learn about my family. Uh, it is my number one priority to learn from them. Uh, I do my very best to be as focused as possible in the person in front of me so they can feel they're, they have someone that is empathetic to their needs because at the end of the day, what I do is serve and serve others well so they can have a better life, right? So I believe that is my mission to support people to have a better life, right? And doing that work, that good work is conducent for me to have the life that I have. Uh, so it is, a, it is a cycle that deeply uh, uh, works for me. The next question is, uh, like in Back to the Future, if you could go back in your any position that you have held, what is one or two things you will tell yourself? So I think about the time that I worked in, uh, in um, hospitals for three years. Um, I was so focused in obtaining quick success that I didn't realize that uh, I needed uh, to create habits of success in my life. I needed to be more disciplined. I needed to appreciate even the small duties. Uh, for a long time, I served coffee and delivered mail to medical doctors and um, medical offices. And um, that taught me uh, a lot. Uh, but at the time, I didn't appreciate it. I thought it was low-level work. I thought it didn't teach me anything. And in my arrogance, I thought I knew much more. If I could go back, I would pay more attention to what I was doing in terms especially of customer service, of treating people well, because that will have saved me a lot of headaches in my future. So I think that's one thing I will tell myself. And finally, as an educator, one thing I will tell myself is that don't take things so seriously. Don't feel that that anything that you're going to do is just going to save the entire world and all the issues are going to be solved by that one effort. And to think about education as if you were a medical professional working in an emergency room hospital where every time that door opens and closes, a new person will come with needs and regardless of their past, it is your duty to serve them well. Not get frustrated or angry when that student doesn't do homework or doesn't behave the way they're supposed to do. At the end of the day, you as educators sign up for it and our job is to make sure that students learn how to live a better life. So the next question is, who is or who are your biggest influences? And here I can go to town, right? Uh, I'm going to start with my father. Uh, my father uh, had a third grade education. He was uh, a veteran of the Second World War, uh, passed and lived through the Great Depression. So when I was growing up, my father was older than the grandparents of my friends. That's why I tend to have an old soul 
because of the way that I was raised. And my father did a lot of bad things and a lot of wrong things, but he did a couple of good things. He will always tell me about El Librito de Oro de Dale Carnegie. Dale Carnegie's golden book. That is a, a series of principles on how to do life. For example, always talk in the interest of others. Basically, don't tell someone how ugly something can be, but uh, take them towards their journey indirectly and in a sincere way. And uh, that is something that I never listened to, but it stuck with me. And as an old man um, in my mid-30s, catastrophically failing in my profession as a principal, it was those readings of Dale Carnegie who were able to show me that there was hope and there was a better way to treat people, to talk to people. And the main thing that my father will always say is, el que persevera triunfa, right? Those who persevere will succeed. And wow, that quote has served me very well throughout the years. Another influence in terms of, uh, um, uh, I will say, um, as an adult, a professional, is Daniel Goldman in his book, Emotional Intelligence, of course, revolutionary. I think that it was from there that uh, I started really understanding uh, how to using the components of, of emotional intelligence, how to have a better life, self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Another big influence is Robin Sharma. Uh, his book, The 5 a.m. Club, absolutely revolutionary. It teaches you that when you own your morning by waking up early before anybody else, you can elevate your life. So I learned uh, several routines where you can take care of your mindset, health set, soul set, and heart set to ensure that you have the quality of life that you want to have. Uh, in terms of fiction, Haruki Murakami is one of my favorites. I also like uh, Jonathan Franzen. Um, and I think that, yeah, uh, oh, and definitely Robert Greene, uh, his series is just uh, wonderful. And for anyone who is trying to play in this house of cards to make a difference towards good, it's important to read Robert Greene. And uh, if you had to tell me which two books I would give away, uh, I will have to say that the novel, The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen will probably be the novel that I will give the most as a gift, as I believe it really covers how life can be of misery uh, if we want to. Uh, it is so powerful and illuminating. And uh, the nonfiction book that I will give is absolutely How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. As I said, a revolutionary approach uh, with, that talks about different figures through society, like Abraham Lincoln, who believed that rather than making enemies of people, it's better to make friends. So uh, that is important. Uh, and then I conclude uh, the episode always talking about productivity. And everybody knows that successful people are people that take productivity seriously. But productivity can look different for everybody. So what does productivity mean to me? My productivity system stands for the following. The less bandwidth I can uh, waste, the better. 
So I follow David Allen's philosophy of GTD that the brain is great to generate ideas, but not to hold them. So step number one of GTD is capture your ideas. And I think that's the most fundamental one. So I use a task manager called Todoist uh, that is just uh, wonderful, but you can use Apple Notes. You can use any, any other task manager. And I'm able to input the idea from, for example, I need ice. I have a supermarket list. I have an idea for a show. I type it there and leave it wisdom and productivity. I saw a teacher uh, helping a student open a locker. I type in there, praise teacher X and X for supporting a student. So the idea is all those things, that those genius ideas that come to mind, I don't let them go to waste, right? Because I captured them immediately. And then guess what? I don't have to spend an ounce of my bandwidth to think, what is it that I have to do? Because it is already written down as an assistant waiting for you to give you the answers. So a task, leak, a task list is super important to me in order to get my things done. Um, I try to keep my email inbox zero and I connect the email with this task list. So I know when projects have to be done, I can get them organized. And at the end of the day, when I have to do is zero and inbox zero, that tells me I'm done for the day and I have properly scheduled whatever I need to do for the appropriate day. It is that way that I feel that once I leave my office, I can close that chapter and begin the chapter of being a husband and a father. That is very important to me because when I come home, it is only fair that I can dedicate proper time for my family. Do I check email once in a while? Yes, I do. I'm a school principal, right? So I may have to do more frequently than other people. However, I keep it at a minimum and I only respond unless it is absolutely necessary. Finally, my morning routine is something that uh, is part of my success. I wake up at 3.47 in the morning, but that means that I have to go to bed before 10 o'clock. I wake up and I do mindful activities such as meditation, micro breathing practice. I read, I journal, and I should be working out as well, right? I have a treadmill in the home. I have a small gym. So I have absolutely no excuse not to run and not to lift weights. But part of this podcast is to hold myself accountable, right? If I'm saying something is going to happen, I need to make sure that it happens. And at the end of the day, when I work out, when I do exercise, I feel that I can live better. And if I can live better, Everybody that I serve, everybody that I love will get better service from me, better attention, better stamina in everything that I do, trying to maximize the opportunity to ensure that I have a great life. So finally, I uh, ask the person in the show, anything else that you would like to include? And then this is the place where people go to town, right? So I'm going to start with my wife, Rosie. It is a beauty to spend my life with you. My children, thank you for being there with me. My father, whatever you are, thank you for everything that you have done. My mothers, even though you are not present with me, and I don't know if you are even present Thank you, because everything that you did taught me different lessons. I am inspired by my teachers, 
by my mentors, my bosses, uh, the people that I read. I'm inspired by the world. And uh, it is a luxury to be alive. It is a luxury to make this show, Wisdom and Productivity. And uh, I am so thankful that you took a moment to listen or to see this video show. Um, whenever you can, give it a like, a retweet, anything that you can do to make sure that this gets everywhere. Um, thank you and have a great evening. Peace and calm. Thank you for listening to Wisdom and Productivity, the podcast of Dr. Epaim Martinez. Chulu. And I love that production. Chulu out. <laughs>